Um, we will uh, continue to look very carefully at the recommendations. I think we all recognize that there have to be uh, changes in how we move forward uh, to ensure communities are safe, to make sure the police have the tools and the abilities uh, to do the work that everyone expects of them. Uh, but those are conversations we will continue to have uh, with the force, uh, with partners across the country, and we're making sure uh, that we're going to take things uh, one step at a time. En uh, français? Nous depuis longtemps. Uh, le travail que Depo fait ici à, à, à Regina uh, pour former les policiers à travers le pays de la GRC. Uh, oui, il y a eu des recommandations importantes uh, qui sortent de la commission d'enquête sur uh, la tragédie en Nouvelle-Écosse. Et nous allons regarder attentivement quelles seront les prochaines étapes pour s'assurer que la police a tous les outils nécessaires pour bien servir les Canadiens, mais que les communautés soient aussi bien servies et protégées à travers le pays. Mais c'est des conversations que nous allons entamer en partenariat avec euh, tout le monde à travers, euh, à travers le pays, que ce soit des policiers ou des, euh, des euh, institutions provinciales ou d'autres. Next question. Hi, Lisa Schick with 980 CJME. Um, you have recently been saying that the Justice Minister in his comments last week was not referring to the NRTA, except he was responding to a question specifically about rescinding the NRTA. He mentioned the NRTA in that response. So how can you say that's not what he was referring to? Uh, as Prime Minister, I'm happy to stand here right now and say we will not be touching the NRTA. Natural resources are constitutionally directed to be the purview of the provinces, and we're not putting that into question. What is incredibly important now, though, is that we all be having real conversations about reconciliation, about economic partnerships with Indigenous communities, and that's what the Justice Minister and my government have committed to doing. We need to make sure that Indigenous peoples who've lived on this land for millennia are able to participate uh, in the benefits drawn from that land. Now, what that looks like is, of course, a conversation that around natural resources needs to be led by the provinces. But I will certainly take this occasion to encourage provincial governments, and a number of them already have, to have real conversations on the path forward in partnership with Indigenous peoples, just like the federal government is doing in areas of our jurisdiction. <clears throat> Laissez-moi être extrêmement clair. En tant que Premier ministre, euh, je dis clairement, nous n'allons pas regarder ou renégocier l'entente sur les ressources naturelles. Ça fait partie de notre Constitution et nous n'allons pas nous en mêler. Mais en même temps, j'en profite pour souligner que c'est des conversations que les provinces doivent avoir avec les peuples autochtones. Le respect, le partenariat qui vient avec la réconciliation exige euh, qu'il y ait plus de consultations, plus de conversations. Il y a plusieurs provinces qui se sont avancées là-dedans de façon extrêmement productive. Il y en a d'autres qui tardent un peu. Alors, j'encourage tous les premiers ministres provinciaux de regarder leurs responsabilités selon la Déclaration des Nations unies sur les peuples autochtones, selon euh, leurs propres engagements au niveau de la réconciliation, incluant la réconciliation économique, euh, pour être de vrais partenaires pour euh, les peuples autochtones de ce pays. Next question. Hi, Wayne Mantika from CTV, and a question from CTV. How many times did uh, Ms. Telford discuss foreign interference with you during the last election? Oh, um, the conversations I have with my chief of staff and with uh, my entire government and with our defense and security experts are ongoing. Uh, we have been talking about foreign interference for years, which is why in 2019, in advance of the last election, we put in an unprecedented mechanism of senior civil servants uh, and top uh, uh, security officials to monitor for the first time in Canada's history the issue of foreign interference in our elections. And that's how we can say and conclude, as they did after the 2019 and 2021 elections, that our elections integrity held, despite what we all know and what we've been talking about since 2015, ongoing attempts by countries like China, Russia, Iran and others to interfere not just in our 
politics or our elections, but in our businesses, in our research institutions, and particularly interfere with diaspora communities here in Canada who are always the first targets of pressure from those governments and, uh, and uh, need to be protected. So conversations uh, with my Chief of Staff, with Katie Telford, on this subject, I have had many of them, many of them over long periods of times, over many years, because it's an issue that needs to be taken seriously. It's Adam Hunter from CBC. A growing number of Canadian institution websites, now including Hydro Quebec, have been taken offline by pro Russian hackers. How concerned are you about this, and why do you think Canadian institutions are being susceptible to these attacks? Uh, obviously, Canada's unequivocally strong stance in support of Ukraine and against Russia's illegal actions uh, is bothersome. Uh, to the Russian government and to pro-Russian hackers. Uh, obviously, uh, we are not going to flinch in any way on our steadfast and total support of Ukraine and the cause for which it's fighting. Because it's not just fighting for its own territorial integrity, for its own people's right to choose their future, to protect their language, their culture, to protect their borders, their sovereignty. Ukrainians right now are fighting for the fundamentals of democracy, for the UN Charter, for the principles and values that underpin our country and so many others. That's why we stand with Ukraine. That's why you know, a couple of DD, uh, denial of service attacks on government websites, bringing them down for a few hours, is not going to cause us to rethink our unequivocal stance of doing whatever it takes for as long as it takes to support Ukraine. Next question. Troy Charles, Global News. Uh, the Trudeau Foundation has now said they'll have an outside investigation to review a donation from a Beijing-linked billionaire. Do you think the foundation has handled the issue properly? You know, that's a question for the foundation. As people know, I haven't been involved in any way uh, with uh, the foundation that bears my father's name uh, in about 10 years, uh, and it continues to be that way. Next question. Hi, Jeremy Symes with the Canadian Press. You first promised in November 2017 that Canada would provide a 200-soldier quick reaction force to the UN for peacekeeping. Your government has now given itself until March 2026 to fulfill that promise. Will you speak honestly to the UN, member countries and Canadians and say whether Canada will make good on its promise? We continue to be a strong supporter of UN peacekeeping. Uh, obviously, UN peace missions have evolved over time. Canada is deeply involved in a number of NATO missions, and we continue to work actively with UN partners and with the UN itself to ensure that we're there to support uh, the important missions they do. We will continue to do that. Prochaine question. Monsieur Trudeau, Laurence Tachereau, Radio-Canada. Euh, donc, votre équipe a affirmé ne pas avoir euh, de temps que pour une brève rencontre avec le premier ministre Scott Moe. Est-ce que c'est suffisant pour parler d'enjeux importants comme les ressources naturelles? Et qu'est-ce que ça dit sur les relations entre Ottawa et la Saskatchewan? Et si vous pouvez répondre en français et en anglais, D'abord, je peux souligner que, comme on fait toujours, euh, quand on s'en vient euh, en quelque part, on, on offre une rencontre avec le premier ministre. Euh, c'est dommage qu'il n'était pas en ville aujourd'hui, donc on ne peut pas avoir cette rencontre. Mais euh, je vais continuer euh, d'avoir des échanges productifs avec, euh, avec M. Mo euh, sur bien des sujets. D'ailleurs, euh, ma dernière visite, euh, j'étais à, à Saskatoon en train de parler euh, des investissements qu'on est en train de faire euh, dans l'industrie minière euh, pour euh, résoudre nos défis de chaîne d'approvisionnement de la Chine, de la Russie et d'ailleurs. On sait qu'il y a des bons emplois ici au Saskatchewan euh, qu'on va continuer de bâtir. Je vais toujours être là pour travailler avec le premier ministre Mo, que ce soit en matière de santé que ce soit en matière euh, de, de garderie, de petite enfance qui sont maintenant rendus à 10 ou que ce soit en matière de croissance économique. Alors, euh, j'ai bien hâte de pouvoir continuer de travailler avec lui. Um, I'm always happy. Uh, to work with the Premier on issues that matter to Saskatchewanians, uh, whether it's bringing childcare in at $10, uh, whether it's making sure we're moving forward on uh, health deals that are going to deliver family doctors, better mental health care, better data collection, better support for frontline health workers uh, with close to $200 billion of investments on the federal level that, quite frankly, uh, Scott was an important partner in driving forward from the, conference of the, the Council of Federation side. Um, 
when it comes to meeting with him on issues of economic growth, we are always there uh, for that. My uh, recent visit to Saskatoon to Vital Metals uh, was all about ensuring that the rare earth elements that the world needs to move towards a cleaner energy future get mined and processed here in Canada and particularly in Saskatchewan. These are things that we're all very excited about and I always look forward to working with him and it's a shame he wasn't in town today. Next question. Yeah, uh, John Cairn, SAS Today. Uh, question is, it's tax time. Uh, Revenue Canada, we're hearing a lot of concerns uh, out there that uh, the workers are going to go on strike. So I'm wondering if you could give us an update on that situation and can you assure Canadians that uh, their taxes and their tax refunds won't be impacted? Uh, we obviously uh, want to make sure we're doing everything we can to avoid a strike. That's why we're working hard at the bargaining table. Uh, we understand how important it is uh, to work at the bargaining table to resolve these issues. That's where we're staying engaged. Uh, Look, public servants in this country have worked incredibly hard over the past years to deliver uh, services and supports to families, particularly through the pandemic, that made a huge difference in the lives of families, in the lives of businesses, in the lives of, of, of communities across the country. Uh, and like all Canadians, they're facing pressures with a rising cost of living. It's good news that inflation seems to be stabilizing and on its way down, according to many economists, but uh, we are, of course, engaged at the at the bargaining table and uh, will continue to do so in good faith and hopefully uh, avoid the impact of a strike. Prochaine question. Hi, Lisa with CJME again. Um, I'm looking to hear what you think of the Saskatchewan Firearms Act, which just passed last week and particularly uh, what it does that will make uh, running a federal gun buyback in Saskatchewan more difficult. Uh, we are committed to keeping Canadians safe from gun violence. Uh, by uh, pro continuing the prohibition on assault-style weapons while uh, protecting the rights of hunters and farmers uh, to have rifles and shotguns that they use for hunting uh, and so forth. These are things uh, that are not incompatible. Uh, we know that there is no Canadian in this country who wants to see more gun violence. We also know that the approach to that needs to be multifaceted. We need to be uh, continuing to strengthen things at the border. Just last year, we interdicted twice as many illegal guns as we had the year before because of investments at the border. We need to invest more in community safety and community policing programs. We need to support uh, First Nations communities with First Nations policing as an essential service. Uh, we need to continue to do more on common sense gu uh, gun control measures that respects uh, hunters and fishers, anglers and, and sports shooters, while at the same time making it more difficult uh, for people to access the kinds of guns that are regularly used in mass shootings uh, in the United States and elsewhere around the world and unfortunately have been used in Canada as well. Uh, these are things that we will continue to move forward on. Uh, we will work with jurisdictions who want to work with us where necessary, but we will fully assume federal responsibility over guns everywhere as necessary. Nous allons continuer notre travail et notre engagement pour garder les communautés en sécurité. C'est pour ça que nous avançons et nous continuons d'avancer sur le contrôle des armes à feu. On sait que des armes de style assaut qui ont été utilisées dans des tueries de masse à travers le pays n'ont pas leur place au Canada. Mais on peut faire ça sans s'attaquer aux droits euh, aux chasseurs et aux, euh, aux fermiers qui euh, ont des, des fusils de chasse. Euh, nous savons que nous avons des opportunités de travailler avec les provinces qui veulent, mais nous allons continuer d'assumer nos responsabilités au niveau du gouvernement fédéral en matière de protection de notre pays. On va prendre deux dernières questions. Two last questions. Noémie Rondeau, Radio-Canada. Euh, vous dites que vous n'avez pas l'intention de négocier euh, ni de revoir la Convention sur les ressources naturelles. Euh, souvent, le dialogue entre les populations autochtones et les gouvernements provinciaux va être assez difficile. Est-ce que euh, vous, vous entendez quand même intervenir, prendre des mesures pour s'assurer que le dialogue soit juste entre les deux parties qui sont les populations autochtones, mais aussi le gouvernement provincial? Bien, évidemment, 
on voudrait bien que ce dialogue entre les, euh, les euh, provinces et les peuples autochtones euh, soit plus positif à bien des endroits qu'elle ne l'est. Parce qu'il y a des exemples. On pense en Colombie-Britannique. On, on pense même à certains aspects du, de la façon que le gouvernement albertain s'engage avec les peuples autochtones, euh, mais certainement ailleurs aussi, où euh, il y a des exemples d'un partenariat économique qui est extrêmement positif, qui nous va, va dans la bonne direction. Mais ce n'est pas au gouvernement fédéral de prendre la place des provinces dans ces discussions-là. Ce n'est pas notre autorité, ce n'est pas notre intention. On respecte la Constitution dans son, dans son intégrité. Mais oui, nous encourageons euh, fortement les gouvernements provinciaux de s'engager de façon substantielle et positive avec les peuples autochtones, parce que ce n'est pas seulement la bonne chose à faire, c'est la chose qui est bonne à faire pour l'économie aussi, pour la croissance, pour la protection des citoyens et de l'environnement et pour l'avenir de la province et du pays. Dernière question, last question. Uh, Tanner, 620 CKRM again. Uh, the federal government obviously announced their $10 a day daycare uh, thing, but here in Saskatchewan, specifically in Regina, there's just, you know, those seats are going to be taken up pretty quick. Is the federal government doing anything or having any policies to help Saskatchewan, specifically cities like Regina, uh, to be able to take advantage of those $10 uh, a day daycare thing? Because there's just not enough uh, space. Uh, let me be very clear and give credit where it's due. It's not just the federal government that's bringing in $10 a day child care. It's a partnership between the provincial governments across the country and the federal government. The government of Saskatchewan is a full partner and is choices by the government of Saskatchewan that means that child care is already at $10 a day here, whereas there are other provinces across the country where it's still years away. They have cut child care fees in half across the country but there are places that aren't at $10 a day, and that is partly due to the leadership, or significantly due to the leadership and the choices made by people, the government of Saskatchewan. So I'm giving full credit there. But I will also highlight that the agreement signed and the billions of dollars given by the federal government for that wasn't just to bring down the cost of childcare. It's also to maintain the quality of childcare spaces by bringing in a pay grid for early childhood educators and making sure that there is quality pay for the people who take care of our kids across the country. But it also involved commitments around creating spaces as well in childcare. So that's all part of, uh, part of the childcare approach that we've had with the provinces. Yes, $10 a day, but also high quality spaces and more of them. It takes years to build a system like this, but that work is ongoing with the government of Saskatchewan and municipalities like Regina and Saskatoon uh, where, uh, where it's appropriate. Merci beaucoup tout le monde. Thank you all for your patience and your questions. Merci. There we go.